Hey guys, this is Anupam. So, I, I was talking to a few people, and uh, you know, one of the guys he asked me uh, about the change data capture feature. What is change data capture? Uh, you might have seen this. Uh, you know, organizations have been using databases for quite some time, and let's say their sales orders table it has hundred uh, thousand records today, and they need this data to go to their database, data warehouse, data lake, wherever. And this information, you know, if they do a full um, extraction, you know, today it will be hundred thousand records being sent out. Tomorrow, you know, when they uh, want to extract, what they would like to really do is, uh, you know, just look at the maybe hundred which have changed or been created or have gone, undergone some deletion, whatever, some, some something has changed about them, right? Um, and they, they don't want the old 100,000 records because they're still there and no change has been done. And, you know, the, the external system still has that data from yesterday. So that's what the Delta Capture or the CDC, um, uh, you know, issue is. And I saw a lot of organizations, you know, they struggle with uh, extracting their SAP data uh, uh, in a CDC or a Delta mode. So I thought I'll create this video, how this is implemented using USP for SAP. Um, I will we'll, we'll go through, uh, you know, basically two modes uh, which are supported. One is the time series mode. Yeah, that is, you know, if the create date and time has changed or, you know, change date of the uh, record um, and the time has changed. And the second mode is when we are on the document number series where the document number and the item number, if, you know, those are changed uh, or newly created, that's what triggers the change data capture. So today let's dive into the time series data capture and see how that can be set up using uh, our Azure Data Factory. All right, let's get going. So let me quickly walk you through uh, what we are going to do. We are going to pick up one of the tables. This is the shipments header table, VTTK, in SAP. And this is the test system. Uh, you will notice we have, uh, you know, 99 records here and uh, First, let's go ahead and do a full extraction of this table using a uh, USB for SAP connector on, on ADF, Azure Data Factory. So this is the template on Azure Data Factory, uh, which is there. If you notice, there's a sync, which is basically, it's just sending out data to a certain folder on your um, Azure Data Lake. And on the source side, we have the system uh, which is making a REST post call uh, to SAP. And here's some parameters on the post which, which you know, need to be sent. So uh, let's walk through those parameters. The delimiter we are saying is the pipeline character. Object type is T for tables. The object name here, if you remember, you know, we are working with VTTK table, so we will specify VTTK here. And then we come to Delta filter parameters. That's, this is something new, so let's spend a minute on this. Um, if, if you look at the VTTK table, it has the create date and create time uh, as its uh, fields. So let's, Let's look at those two fields. The ERDAT field, um, that's this one. That's the date on which the record was created. And RZ is the entry time field. So those are the two items we'll pick up for uh, our time series Delta capture. Okay. So those are have been mapped here. We are saying, uh, you know, uh, ERDAT and RZ, those are the uh, two fields based on which we want to trigger the time series. 
the requester always stays as usb for sap and then you know this is the, these are the destination parameters this is uh, you know sending to azure data lake uh, you also have the option to send it to aws or gcp cloud or nfs on premise um this particular entry is the sm59 destination and we are using sas key for security um and the last parameter this one is really the folder name on the adls azure data lake where we want to extract this record right so there's no coding involved but uh, these parameters have to be specified of uh, what we want to extract and where do we want this data to go all right so let's go ahead and trigger this and see what happens now now this is running uh, uh you know usb for sap uh, going back to sap and requesting the data from vttk table and since this is the you know first time this will go and do a full uh, extraction so it shows my pipeline ran successfully if i go back to the pipeline it will show the logs and if i go to my azure data lake folder which is right here remember the parameters we were giving uh, this is the folder structure and on 411 This file has been created and if I go, I get this set of uh, records from my SAP system, right? So there's 99 uh, records from the, from the SAP and then there's this header line. So if, if you go back to VTTK, check the number of entries. So it has 99 entries, right? Uh, so that matches. We are getting first record here uh, as the header line and then 99 rows uh, for each of the records on the VTTK table. So now uh, it has got a full refresh. That worked, uh, that's nice. Now let's do uh, create another record for shipments in SAP and do a delta refresh right so you, know, you probably know this to create a shipment in sap we have to use vt 01n and i'm going to use transportation planning 2800 i have a few options for shipment type i'm going to choose delivery driver and I will keep it simple. Just go ahead and create an entry here. Uh, so save this. So it shows one, uh, shipment 1495 has been created. Let's go and see the shipment 1495. And there you go. This 1495 has been created. Now if I run um, the Delta extractor, it should not get me the 99 records from earlier it should be getting just this particular 1495 record right so if i first check my vttk table and i have 100 entries here and there is 1495 created right here right so now let's run uh, on ADF side, the same extractor. So the parameters still remain the same, obviously. Um, we are still going to do uh, VTTK extraction and they're still extracting to the same folder. So we will just, you know, run it uh, with the same parameters so i'll add a trigger trigger now 
So now it is going back to SAP and requesting, give me whatever new or changed has been done on SAP front since my last run, right? So once it runs successfully, it should be creating the new output on my on my ADLS folder. So this is uh, 1057. It ran successfully, and if I go to my ADLS portal, refresh this. Fifty-seven. That's that's the latest run. And fifty-seven. It has been created. And if I see now, it has created uh, again the the PTTK increase. Just that this time it has extracted only one record, and obviously the first record always uh, it is creating as the column names. So this. Um, you know, shows us exactly how uh, simple it is to to do a full extraction from SAP and then based on time series, do a Delta extract as well. Um, this is something which is uh, frequently requested and, uh, you know, I just wanted to share how without writing a piece of code, uh, you could be extracting full as well as Delta extract from your SAP system. All right, uh, I hope you find this useful. Thank you.